What's up everybody? My name is Forrest. I stole that from In An Instant and today we're going to talk about my favorite panoramic camera, the Horizon 202. This is a swing lens camera, which means exactly what it sounds like. It swings the lens around and it creates a longer negative. There are a variety of Horizon models. The 202 is my favorite for several reasons. It has aperture control and shutter speed control. There's the Horizon Compact, which does not have either of these controls, but this one does. There are other swing lens cameras, like the Widelux and the Noblex, but those are generally much more expensive than the Horizon series, and the Horizon 202 is one of the cheaper models in the Horizon series and they're still available brand new. I just got this one from Russia. This is the box it comes in. I was gonna show you what all it comes with and I'm also gonna show you some of the shots that I've taken with it and then I'm gonna show you the mods that I think it's really necessary to make to this camera to make it into an excellent camera. So let's get right into it. it comes in this box. There was an outer cardboard box and it came directly from Russia like this. So inside here, is this case. The camera comes with a case that perfectly fits it, as well as a manual in Russian, which I cannot read, so not super useful, but I believe there's an English version online of that. Uh, inside the case, the camera is packed in a plastic bag. Here is the camera itself, and this is the handle. The handle is necessary because if you hold the camera like this, your fingers are in the shot. So you have to use this handle that attaches to the bottom of the camera to get your fingers out of the way of the shot. A little pro tip, the bottom of the handle unscrews and you can store some stuff in there. Um, I like to store the filters that come with the camera in the bottom there. It also comes this with this sweet Russian strap made by Zenit, which I think goes really well with the camera. So here's the camera. As far as I can tell, these are still available on eBay, essentially new in the box, and you can buy them and get them shipped for Russia. This one was under $200, which I think is a great deal, especially compared to the prices of other panoramic cameras like the Wide Lux, which I, it takes very similar photos and has a lot of the similar flaws that I'll talk about in a minute, um, as well as the absolutely insane prices of the Hasselblad X-Pan, which is a very different camera, but I, I think if you are looking to shoot panoramic photos and you don't have an unlimited source of money, I think you should definitely look at the Horizon. Loading the film on this camera is a little bit of a struggle. It opens the back similar to a normal 35mm SLR. You have to route the film behind this roller, around the film planes, curved film plane, through this sprocket, and then around into the take-up spool. There is a diagram on the back here, which is helpful for sure. It is a little tricky and I would recommend trying to do it a few times with film that you don't care about, film that's already exposed. This camera is known, this is the number one flaw, this camera is known to rip the film. So you have to be pretty careful not to advance aggressively and you have to be careful not to advance past your last frame. You usually get 21 or 22 frames on a 36 exposure roll of film. So you have to be careful not to go past that last frame. And every time that I've ripped the film, it's because I've gone past that last frame. I would recommend for your first few shoots, either unloading the camera in the dark after you're done shooting or bringing a dark bag with you just in case you rip the film. From the factory, these are set up to be hyperfocal at infinity at f2.8. I don't know about you, most of the subjects that I shoot are not at infinity. So it's not really useful to have a sharp infinity at f2.8 and everything in the foreground is blurry. Everything between 5.5 meters and infinity is sharp. Everything closer, blurry. I don't think that's very useful. I don't think that's how this camera should be set up and that's not really how I shoot. If I were only taking landscapes, maybe that would be useful, but for what I shoot, that's not really useful. A lot of my first shots on my first two rolls from this camera had a blurry subject in the foreground and then a sharp background. So the first thing you can do to fix that is just use higher speed film. If you're always shooting with higher speed film, you can always stop down the aperture. So I would just recommend if you're gonna shoot normally, try to keep that aperture at f11 or f16 using the fastest film that you wanna use in this camera. 
The next fix for this issue, which I think is really critical, is to move the film plane back. A friend of mine directed me to a site that is now dead but is still available on archive.org that shows a modification to this camera where you open the back of the camera and there are these film rails. The film rails control the focal distance. So if you add a piece of tape you can move the film back away from the lens and bring the focus closer. So there's a few thicknesses of tape and that depends on where you want the camera to focus, but I think adding that to the camera significantly improves its usability and it makes it so that you can take pictures of people, pictures of closer subjects, and then if you want infinity to be in focus you can still stop down. I think that's a critical mod. Another issue with the Horizon is the tendency for flares and light leaks. To resolve that, it's pretty easy to put flocking material all around the inside so that the internal reflections don't cause as many flares on the film frame. This might just be a novelty, but you can use the slow shutter speed for fun panorama tricks. You can have somebody run from one side of the frame around you and be on the other side of the frame. Or you can set the camera on a tripod and then you can get in the frame yourself as long as you get in within the time of the lens sweeping the image. I've found this lens has really excellent color reproduction. Um, I've shot some expired ektachrome and I've also shot some Pro Image 100. The film plane mod is really, really critical if you're going to shoot any 100 speed film. I think it's almost impossible to get things in focus if you don't do the film plane mod and you shoot 100 speed film. I found that for some reason I rarely have camera shake issues with this camera. I've been able to shoot at night on the slow shutter speed and as long as I hold it steady I don't have shaking issues. It must be something to do with the fact that you're only exposing a narrow amount of the image at a time. Any shaking that's happening is only happening to a small amount of the image. I definitely make sure to hold the camera steady but I can shoot from the hip at the high speed and get good results especially if it's stopped down. One trick that I have read online for using this camera is that the field of view is the same as your vision. So if you look in one direction and you look to the left and you look to the right without moving your head, that is the field of view of the camera. So basically if everything you can see is a good picture, a good composition, then you can take a picture on the horizon. Just as a quick summary, I think this is one of the best deals in panoramic cameras and if you are interested in exploring wider negatives, the Horizon 202 is definitely a camera that you should at least investigate. I think it's the best deal, that's why I bought one. I actually borrowed this one and then I used it for so long I figured I had to have my own. But yeah, check it out and if you like the Horizon 202 or if you think I'm an idiot and you hate the Horizon 202, you can also tell me that. So see you in the next one.